Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Spares Box. Today we're back on the Sylvia. It's going to be heaps of fiddly little jobs today. We've just got all sorts of housekeeping type of deal. Um, with engine conversion, generally, when you start to get to the end of it, you've got all these little things like running cables and, and fire sleeving and P-clips and all sorts of gear. So um, it's going to be a bit of a mixed bag today. Nath will be here at some point to help us uh, continue with the wiring as well. So we'll, uh, I don't want to give anything away because every time I say we're going to do something, it never happens. So we're just going to keep chipping away at stuff. But yeah, plenty of, plenty of little housekeeping jobs today. And yeah, hopefully by the end of it, we'll uh, have a fair bit of progress done. So let's get into it. This is an offcut of the uh, cabling that we've been using to go to the alternator and the starter and some of the other uh, vital battery setup things. You're probably wondering why I'm mucking around with this bit of cable. Um, it's just easier to have this bit stripped back to check terminal size and heat shrink size rather than having to go back to the car, back to here, muck around. I mean, obviously we can carry them over there, but you guarantee the second I sit this on the engine bay somewhere it'll slide off and it'll be 432 terminal pickup.
just crank it or see if it'll crank. Well, it cranks. Bugger all voltage though. Cranks, that's a nice start. Chuck the jumper pack on it and see if we can get oil pressure. Just crank it again. Hates life, eh? The second that fires, it'll just be like dort. Dumb question, all the fuses and relays are in this back box, yeah? Yep. Ow. Pointy. Yeah. Is the ECU actually on? No, nah, ECU is powered. Oh. Whoa. It's probably getting power from the starter post now. But we didn't tie it to the post. Yeah, there was the... no, there was a secondary one that says starter. Yeah. That I wonder if that's constant power, as well as whatever you've wired that up to. And if there's some sneaky bridgey deal going on here. Because that's powering the EC, right? You reckon that's fuel pump and fan trigger? Yes. The blue so... and the white one are fuel pump and fan trigger. Maybe just look more at the fuel. Fuse four goes to relay one, yes. Fuse four. That is technically no, no power to ECU currently. According to my diagram, I will pull that off and double check it. The ECU has power. The ECU has power, because, which is good. That's the opposite of the problem we want. Yeah, yeah. When it has too much power. It must be that power to the starter, because I don't think that was connected on Adam's car. So where are you, no, where's your fuel? in the starter circuit. Where is your um, fuel, uh, sorry, your, yeah, your fuel pump trigger. Which one's that? Uh, follow the one from your knee. What color? Red. So red is fuel, white is, is fans for the back. Is it positively switched or ground switched? Uh, it's positively switched. It's probably ground switched by the ECU. What's the second pin? Is that just the fans? Yeah. It's not, yeah, it's normally ground switched. Okay, well that, well that would be why the the fuel pumps aren't on. But what we can do is just bridge the relay out and see if it'll run. There we go. Got fuel. Battery flat. Oh, I've got the jump pack off. Go again. Gonna start. Yeah, well, it runs. Yeah, good. So I don't think it's. I don't think it's mega ha mega happy, but. Well, it, it like, runs. It runs and kind of runs on its own. It's very quiet. It is a lot quieter than I thought it would be. That's kind of almost disappointing. Well, now that you've done your thing, I can make it work. Yeah, that's... And then I'll just get you to fix the fuses. And I reckon that power is literally because I've just whacked it onto the starter. Because I've picked up power from the starter post. Yeah. Because it said starter on it. Uh -huh. But I did, I did think it was odd. Because I reckon that wire is literally teed into what you've got fused. Mm. Actually, what it would be easy to check, see if the output side of the relay has power at it. Oh, uh, yeah. Because then if it's a common... If my, if my wire has power... If you're, if you're triggered, it. yeah, if you're triggered output, like if your output to the, rel to the ECU from the relay has power on it, you know that it's getting backfed from somewhere else. Potentially there's two pins to the ECU that can be powered. Yeah. So it could physically be a different pin, but it's still just powering up. Well, that's a pretty... An awesome milestone. Yeah. That was a legit first start. Yeah, that was. That was almost uneventful. As we discussed in the first, in the previous videos, uh, we actually ended up with starting off with three different independent looms um, that we were going to have to sew and merge together and use the bits that were useful. We had a loom that was kind of modified already from the car that we pulled the original donor engine out of that was 
done to the point where it worked, but not, not very well. Um, so we're gonna do a bit of work with that. With the new engine, we ended up having a full Holtec loom that was ready, suited to this engine, suited to the ECU. And with this kind of setup, there's not much to link the car's body wiring into the ECU. So that's all been done. Uh, being that this is going to be a track car only, uh, accessory circuits we didn't really need, so we ended up stripping out the entire body loom of the car. So presently there is no S13 loom in this at all. Uh, we've really just dealt with things that we need for the track, lights, indicators, uh, windows and interior light. Uh, to do that, we basically just used seven core trailer wiring and ran a separate loom, constructed a separate, separate loom that runs down the side. Uh, fuse boxes, two in the front, one for ECU functions, one for lighting functions. Fuse box in the back. Fuse box in the back is dealing with our rear fans for the rear radiator setup and for the two fuel pumps in the back. Um, so really is a quite a minimal loom. It'll be easy to service. Uh, if anything happens and it gets damaged with the car, we can replace it pretty easily at the track. As part of that, as we've uh, full wiring um, diagram, so we know where everything goes, uh, where everything routes, so we can basically fix it on the fly if we need to. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's uh, our clean loom, ready to rock and roll. What's in it at the moment, 85? Yeah. Go and start it again. Thanks, mate. Thanks. Lovely, uh, Have a lovely uh, afternoon. Yeah. That started too easy. We put in another solid day. Uh, Nathan's been here for most of the day helping us and we finally got this thing running. So that's the biggest benchmark, I guess, for any engine conversion is finally seeing it run. 
um, testing all the systems that we've put in place. We've got a few little uh, wiring gremlins that we've got to take care of. Uh, still a little bit more fabrication to do. Got to make a rad support, a few other little brackets and stuff, but for the most part, it's there. Pretty stoked it runs. Yeah, we're all pretty over the moon. A few little things to fix up, but we'll uh, yeah definitely have this thing completed and on the track in no time. So we'll uh, pack it up for night and keep going later. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.